The former Minneapolis police officer convicted of murdering George Floyd attacked in a federal prison and he was seriously injured. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has more on this story. Good morning, Jacqueline. Hey Gio, good morning. George Floyd's death obviously rocked the country in 2020, sparking nationwide protests about police brutality and race relations. And now sources say the man at the center of it all found guilty of murdering Floyd is in the hospital. Shut it out, it's your boy GP the Beast, man. And we're gonna tap in about this dude, Derek Chauvin. You know, he the police that killed the boy the Floyd. Boy Floyd. <clears throat> and you know what I'm talking about? Did he think that he was gonna actually get away with that? Did he think that he was going to actually be able to do time and walk the line? But if he did, he got it wrong. One thing about prison, if you got that monkey on your back, you got that target on your back, somebody going to get at you. This time, it happened to be a Mexican mafia, which means the boy Derek Chauvin, he got troubles. This morning, sources tell ABC News Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer convicted of murdering George Floyd by kneeling on his neck, sparking massive civil rights protests, is now in the hospital with serious injuries after getting stabbed by another inmate. The court commits you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 270 months. 47-year-old Chauvin is serving out his 21-year federal sentence for violating Floyd's civil rights and a 22-and-a-half-year state sentence for second-degree murder at this medium-security federal Correctional Facility in Tucson, Arizona. Back in August, officials moved him there from this maximum security Minnesota state prison where he was mainly kept in solitary confinement largely for his own protection. The Bureau of Prison See, when you're a cop and you're a cop like Derek Chauvin that got a high-profile case, it's no safe place for you in jail. He should have stayed in solitary confinement because that's the safest place he going to be. And even in there, they will get him. They going to get him because there's dudes in here that ain't never getting out. And they don't think they getting out. They don't think no laws is about to change for them. They don't feel like nothing is in their favor. But what they do feel is in their favor is respect. And the person who takes out Derek Chauvin will be respected. He'll be known forever. Now this person might have had life in prison. But he just made the history books. The person that just stabbed Derek Chauvin just made the history books. Derek Chauvin should have never, never got out of solitude confinement. But it's hard. You know it's hard. Who wants to do 15 years in a motherfucking five by seven cell? You know what I'm talking about? However size it is, it's very small. It's very uncomfortable. No humans around. No female, nobody to communicate with. All you can really do is read a book. They are allowing you to have TVs now in the hope. Maybe he got a TV, but even then, that's not enough. Protection. The Bureau of Prisons only revealing an incarcerated individual was assaulted at the Federal Correctional Institution Tucson yesterday. In a recent documentary called The Fall of Minneapolis, Chauvin spoke to the media for the first time, calling the trial and sentencing a sham, claiming his use of his knee on Floyd's neck was part of his police training manual. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. 5-316, excellent restraint technique, right in their written policy manual. And sources say Chauvin is as of now in stable condition and is expected to survive, but we have not heard back from his attorney or the prison. With the kind of case that Derek Chauvin has, I'm surprised he ain't been stabbed long time ago. I'm surprised he lasted this long. And I will be surprised if he make it out of prison. The only way he gonna get out of prison is if he get out of prison early enough, in time, for nobody to get to him. But it's out now. They smell blood. No matter where he go, they gonna be on him. Cause somebody, somebody, is going to be the one. Somebody wants to be the one. Tonight, a former Mexican mafia member has been charged with attempted murder for the stabbing of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Federal prosecutors say a 52-year-old inmate stabbed Chauvin 22 times with an improvised knife. It happened last Friday in the law library of a federal prison in Tucson. He told the FBI he'd been thinking about assaulting Chauvin for about a month. Chauvin is serving more than 20 years for the murder of George Floyd. 
It was only a matter of time. I'm surprised one of the brothers didn't get him. I'm surprised a Mexican mafia got him. But he's a target, and he's a target for anybody, especially somebody that's looking for a rep, especially somebody that's looking for a name. He'll never be able to walk them halls again. It's really bad. It's really bad for a police to go to jail. Police be on the streets. They lock a lot of people up. They, they create a lot of enemies. They make a lot of enemies. When police go to jail, especially for doing something that's foul, like Chauvin did, like kneeling on that man's neck like that, yeah, he out of pocket. Way out of pocket. Definitely, people are out to get him. Definitely, he is the honey. Definitely, I am surprised that he made it this long. I'm sure you'll be hearing about Chauvin again in the news before he actually serves the rest out of his sentence. Chauvin is the hunted right now. It's really bad for him. He's living a really rough life. No matter how he was on the streets, see, yeah, Mr. Chauvin was very powerful. He ruled the streets. He controlled it. When he made decisions, orders were followed. He was in control. He knows how it is to make people suffer. You could tell. You could tell by the look in his face. He had no conscience. He had no feeling. He felt like George Floyd was nothing but an animal. He reminded us. He reminded y'all. He reminded the world of how they really feel about blacks. How white police really feel about blacks. How the Ku Klux Klan really feel about blacks. They've never had no love, never. For a human to be able to do that without no conscience, it's just, to me, it's kind of like unbearable. But it has been done. I mean, look what they've done in the past. They've hung us from trees to only where our toes could barely touch the ground. Imagine that, you being hung by a rope and your toes barely touch the ground just enough. enough to keep you from dying. And they leave you like that for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. That's some cruel shit. They done did some cruel shit because they cruel. And now, when they be cruel, eventually they can get punished. Now, a whole lot of them done got away. They have been getting away for years and years and years and years. Finally, finally, one gets punished. But guess where he at? In a medium, in a medium institution. Why? Is he in a medium institution? Why? When he kills somebody? Why? When he kills somebody for murder? He's in a medium institution? Because they gonna show him that love. But they didn't know that that love was gonna hurt him. Because when they let him out of lockdown, when he was no longer in lockdown, and he actually walked on the yard of a medium institution where people are allowed to mingle around, where you don't have to actually live in a cell, you could live in a cell if it's a level three. It wasn't a level three because he in the feds. Therefore, if he was in a medium institution, he was in an FCI, Tucson FCI, which means he's living in a dorm setting like area, which means people can stab him when he sleep, which means he could be got to. Now, I don't know if he's in a cell or if he was in a dorm, but it's still wide open. He's still allowed to go to chow. He's still allowed to go to the yard. He's still allowed to go to the law library where he got stabbed at 22 times. He in the law library actually trying to beat his case on some bullshit when he know he hella foul. And they in there watching him. And you think that ain't making him mad? This motherfucker in the law library trying to get out early. You know what? I'm going to take this motherfucker's life. Fuck him. Fuck him. If the blacks don't do it, I'm going to do it. But somebody got to do it. Because it got to be done. Because that's the law. 
That's prison. Prison ain't like the streets. When you violate the law of prison, they gonna get you. They gonna get you every time. You see what they did to Jeffrey Dahmer? You see what they did to Whitey Vulture? You see what they did to Roger Kibbe? The convicts gonna get you every time. You see what they gonna do to everybody that go in that motherfucker that's foul? They gonna get them every time. In America, everything you ever got as a people, you either have to fight for it or you have to die for it. John Terskak was the guy who got him. He told investigators that he targeted the Minneapolis ex-homeless officer because he wanted to kill him. He said he wanted to kill him the day after Black Friday so he could make sure it represented the black cause. The Mexican Mafia was on his shit. He was like, okay, I'm gonna take care of this for the blacks because I want him dead too. Black and brown coming together. Ain't that so? Welcome back. We have some breaking news that we need to get to. We have new details in the prison attack on former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. We know he was stabbed 22 times last week, and he's serving time at a federal prison in Arizona for his role in the death of George Floyd. Now, today, a 52-year-old inmate, we know his name to be John Tersak, was charged with attempted murder in the stabbing. He reportedly told FBI agents he attacked Chauvin on Black Friday as a symbolic connection to Black Lives Matter. Okay, man, y'all see what it do, man. I hope y'all liked it that, man. You know I had to tap into that because he in prison, he a white cop, he got stabbed, and you know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to bring you all this content on the way I feel about it and give you the insight and the game that I got about being in prison. You know what I'm talking about? So I hope y'all gave me some likes, give me some subscribers, share. You know what I'm talking about? Tap in with your boy, send the comments. Let me know what you like, man. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like, man. I'm tapping in with y'all, man. Shout it out. You already know how we do it, man. Shout it out. That's part. Yeah, your boy GP the Beast, man. Shout out gang. Fill his pocket up with some chain. I just wanna talk to him. Try, try, try to smut my name. But niggas know I'm about it. I'm about it. And what fucked me up is the niggas that spoke about it. Niggas who spoke niggas about it. Niggas that even defend me. They don't know I know about it. They don't know. What really fucked me up, the hater side was the most crowded. Mm. I, I don't claim clicker, but I do be around it. I'm around and it. when I leave the house, I don't never leave without it. Never. I, I don't never sleep without it. Shit, I can't even eat without it. I got it when I'm getting my dick sucked. Can't even freak without it. First thing waking up, I don't brush my teeth without it. I don't brush. When I'm in the city, I don't slide through the streets without it. I don't slide. Niggas might catch me slipping if I be without it. I so to leave home it. without it. I would never think about it. Never. Mozzie and E. Mozzie, my nap. Don't even think about it. Never. Born with this game. Shit, I would never eat without it. Never. They gave me 17. I couldn't believe I got it. Thought I was through with money, but I refused to believe I got it. Big bitch ass nigga snitch. Forced me to take a plea about it. Talk shit behind my back. No time to think about it. Ain't, ain't no running from the phone, nigga. I, I gotta go see about it. And it gotta be a body before we can talk peace about it. Talk, talk, talk shit on the net. Shit, we in the streets about it. We in the streets. Oh, you know about a body, nigga? Don't even speak about it. Hey, hey nigga, ain't built to actually be about it. Okay. And if it ain't no paperwork, nigga, then why you speak about it? Where you from? The heights of Old Park. They always ask about it. I'm a product of both, nigga, and I'm a smash about it. Nigga, I'm a I smash. always wanted this money. I still dream about it. So cracked to the city by any means about it. By any means. I could have been a tycoon, nigga. I thought about it. Thought about but it. a nigga still a goon, nigga. Ain't no doubt about Ain't it. No doubt the about bitch it. wanted to freak shit, but no doubt about Ain't it. No doubt Told about the bitch it. I'm cool. She got dismissed and got out it. She bowed it. I thought about it. Thought I made about a call it. about it. What, what she thought? Since I've been gone, I wasn't about it. I, I got the game it. from the dope beat. Trap house had them crowded. Had crowded. Nigga, they know the things. They taught me how to reroute it. How to, re how, how to repackage it up. Shit, I had to recount it. I'm a, I'm a legend in the city. Miss shot and I'ma rebound it. Respect it on the block. Better ask the streets about ask it. Streets, been locked nigga. up in the pier. Shit, I hate to think about it. 
I've been neglected a lot, shit, but I'm cool about it. Nigga, nigga cool. shot at me and missing. That nigga made the news about it. Re recognizing my mistake, nigga, I ain't no fool about it. I got motion in these streets and I can't move without it. Never. Mama gave me some game. I wasn't too keen about it. I rejected it a lot, but I was unforeseen now, about mama. it. No, no warning shots in the pen, shit. You better read about it. Get, catch your body in the pen and let they folks read about it. The bitch said she loved me, but her movements made me doubt it made She wasn't in the visiting it. room and that motherfucker was crowded, right, it was crowded. Niggas say I went bad, shit, nigga, I heard about it heard But no shit. paperwork exists on a case with my words Niggas about it Niggas say I robbed my nigga mama, how you think I feel about yeah, it? That nigga see. mama like my mama, I'm ready to kill about it yeah, If our true. city come together, nigga, we should kill about it yeah, Everybody buy each other music, let's get a meal about it L Lil GP and GP3, they with it and they bout it Niggas Them bout little it. niggas clone me, ain't no doubt about it, Do, doing shit that I do with the same route about same it, route it's about like doing business with myself, all we do is count it, you never got. understood why they hate, I would just think about it, think I'm about trying it. to figure this shit out so I could teach about it, teach I about had things on every car, the streets would speak about speak it, went about to the feds, extra five for packing heat about it, got stripped for the crown, used to be the king but got out it, but my nep took it over so I'm really proud about now, it, proud of you niggas now. made decisions and split the hood about it. They can't love you like I do, they didn't grow up around it no. Got my first kick at 15, I'm really about it really My brother got it. smacked by the rollers, I had to read about I it Being black can fuck you up, who gon' teach about who it? If the culture is it. fucked up, who the one who gon' preach about who it? Gonna who gon' talk about, about it? it? Who gon' walk the walk about it? My closest nigga let me down, but I don't now talk about it like my, my other nigga got at my bitch, I never spoke about it In return, I fucked this bitch and made a joke about it we, we settled the shit, we smoked and had a drink about it We dapped, saluted, and decided not to speak about it we cool. These niggas keep testing me and I always beast about it So I had a word with God and ask him what he think about it What you think, God?